Good morning. If you're worshiping here, we're glad to have you, obviously. If you're worshiping with us on the live stream, we welcome you this morning, too, to the service of worship of the Warsaw Christian Church. We don't have any particular announcements to make at this time, except that with things getting a little bit better, anyone out there who wants to come here, we have a few seats available. We're socially distanced. We're wearing our masks. We're doing all the things that we're supposed to, and we would be delighted to have you join us if you would like to. And otherwise, the live stream continues. When the house is packed again, the live stream continues. We will continue to offer this, hopefully to expand it. May we stand for the opening prayer. Our Father, we thank you on this beautiful spring day, well, almost spring, to come into this house. For this Sunday, there is no threat of water currently, no snow and ice, none of the things that we've been experiencing for the last three or so weeks. We thank you for this beautiful day, for the beautiful blue sky, for all of the blessings you give us. For those, O oh God, around our state and around our country who are suffering in the aftermath of the flooding of the past week, our prayers are with them. My prayers personally, having been there and knowing what that means and what that requires to get your life back in order. We pray that you would be with them. Let us provide help where we can as we try to return to normal. We thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to gather here. We still face challenges in our country with the COVID and with other things, but nonetheless, O oh God, we continue to hope that we can work toward being and doing the things that you want us to do, being the people that you want us to be. Let us not lose sight, too, that we are three weeks now into the season of Lent. We have not been able to focus as we perhaps would have in years past, but nonetheless we remember this is the time that we remember all that Jesus did for us. Just as we do at Advent at Christmas, we focus on the sacrifice that he made here, leading up to Easter and all that surrounds that. May we not forget and forever remember that you love us, you loved us then, you love us now, you love us forever. And that love is exemplified in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Forgive us of our evils. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. My apologies for winging it on the Lord's Prayer. Sometimes I just get in there, and I like singing the national anthem. You know, you forget where you're going, but we got the sentiment, and that's the important thing. Those of you here, those of you at home, if you'd like to join us, our hymn of praise this morning is hymn number 552. 552, standing on the promises, we're going to sing the first and second verses.
Brother Joe, you on the way? Okay. <laughs> Joe's got props this morning, too. Good. Good morning. My name's Joe Wright. My children's moment this morning is on preparation. Now, the old school teacher in me, on a beautiful spring day, starts thinking vacation, spring vacation. And for me, the best vacation is a beach vacation. So in order to speak to preparation, I got, what? This was cheap, the yard sale. Uh, I packed. I got packed, and I recommend for you to pack for your vacation also. Because preparation, preparing is to avoid problems. And we plan. We plan to get ready so we don't forget anything. We want to think ahead. We wanna, don't want to miss anything that could be fun. So if you're packing, of course you need toothbrush. And if you're headed to the beach, you'll need suntan lotion. Um, now, you also need your sunglasses, so you see, and foot cups. <laughs> hey, everybody don't pay them? Okay. The point I want you to understand is preparation has a couple of points. We can avoid problems, cavities, sunburn, things like that with our preparation. But the Lord has provided us with so many blessings, we also need to be prepared to enjoy the ocean's waves, to prepare the beautiful sunshine. Let us pray. May God's love, that is a blessing that washes over us all, every day, and help us to stay ready to enjoy it. Amen. Thank you, Joe. And of course, you need your swim trunks too that he, that he showed so that we don't want to lose anything in the ocean if we're swimming wherever we, we may be going. As we turn our attention to prayer this morning, I want to share several things with you that folks who are on the prayer list. First of all, we want to remember the family of Terry Smith. We celebrated her life and passing Friday with the funeral. Alex Weldon, I think Alex is doing okay. I haven't heard from Bobby about that. On the, on the extended prayer list, Sue Rankin, Betty Wright. How's your mother doing, Joe? Very well. Uh, Thursday afternoon, uh, the family got COVID. Uh, Betty got COVID-19 second vaccine shots. Good. And that hit her pretty hard. Yeah. But uh, I think yesterday she was getting better. Good. Shirley can surely can attest to that that different people react different ways to the vaccine, but it's just important that we do that. And talk to Joe this morning. Joe's got some more tests coming up and some other things he needs to do, but he's getting better. When he can walk down to get your mail, you're gonna that's gonna be the that'll be all the test on it. Jason Smith, of course, Jason at the passing of his mother, but his own concerns that he has. Mike Evans, Mark Vagley, who um, Myron Newman put on the prayer list, he's still on the ICU and on a ventilator. And Kathy Hall, who was on the extended list, can be removed. Um, this week in praise reports, I wanted to add that I talked to Mary Scott. Many of you will remember Mary from years and years ago. She and Eddie came, came for many years here and then he passed away, and she moved in with Leanne, her daughter, up in Dry Ridge. And Mary sends her regards to all. She called me as I was on the way to Warsaw Friday, and we had a nice conversation. Also, Shirley wanted me to add Doris Sapote and Lauren Miles to the prayer list. Are they your employees? Okay. 
Okay, we want to remember them. I want to congratulate Brian Newman, who I know that, that Meyer is probably watching. If he's not, if he is, we're glad to congratulate you. He made, uh, he made the pages of the River Times this week, just as Sally did a few weeks ago as the person of the week. So we congratulations to Brian for that. And birthdays, let me get my birthday list here to see what we have. Joe said that Ellie Olden Dickey's niece concluded her first season at Mount St. Joe's. They had a winning season, although they lost last night. And uh, but she's she's been up and down with COVID testing and off and on and positives and all of this thing. But she made it through. So hopefully we'll be having a better season next year. All right, what month are we in now? Kennedy Bledsoe coming up on the 19th. We want to remember her. Then we have a couple of others that will be coming up later in the month. Also, one of our faithful, who I hope is out there in the, in the ether world with us this morning, Glenda Fayotte or Brack Abrams. I've known Glenda 50-plus years. Lucy McVeigh had a birthday. Well, let me get through with Glenda, then I'll get back to Lucy. Uh, Glenda, we're glad to have you, glad that you had a birthday, and we wish you the best. Lucy McVeigh had a birthday. You you don't get to count until next year. It was on a Sunday. I know, but we counted, we sang, we did everything. For those of you who can't hear this, is Bob Weldon wants us to continue the celebration of his birthday for yet another week. Let me look over my list here and make sure that I've covered everything I think that I have. May we bow for a moment of silent meditation. third Sunday of Lent, we gather here at, in the comfort of our homes, we're watching from home or being here in the sanctuary. There is much heartache and sorrow in the world around us. That sorrow and grief is also felt in the community of those around us. Give us the strength to feel the joys that are right in front of us, for most of that fullness goes unnoticed. Open our eyes to spread that joy to those around us. We lift up those names on the prayer list. When we focus on those mentioned in the names of those who need prayer, may we feel a sense of comfort. For your will, not our will, be done. Granted, the response will be in your time, not our time. Give us the peace that passeth all understanding as we wait for your will to be done. In Jesus' name, amen. We welcome back to the soloist rotation today, Laura Hansen, who's yay. been, Bob says yay, <laughs> who's been out for a couple of months actually for various things and and she and Shirley are going to rock us another hymn, Walk in Jerusalem Just Like John.
4,808 people. 4,808 have died of COVID in the last year. On this day, we celebrate an anniversary that we wish we didn't have to celebrate. For it was on the first Sunday, there were five Sundays in March last year, it was the first Sunday of March that was the last time that we gathered in person in 2020. The next Sunday, I called Tony and Tony said, we need, to, we need to shut it down, we just don't know. That was the last Sunday that I took off because I just felt like I needed to be here throughout all of this. On the 10th of March is the date that I've heard pegged. The world shut down. The world shut down to try to stop something over which we had no control. I don't want to hear blame. I don't want to see pointing fingers. None of that. That makes no difference at all about what happened, how it happened. The important thing is that we were thrown into something that we had not experienced for more than 100 years. The question of today's sermon is not a question but a statement that could be a question. We want to be ready and are we ready? Joe pointed out for the kids and for us a wonderful opportunity, a wonderful chance to go to the beach. What you need to take with you to the beach. All those things are important. Your trunks, uh, toothbrush, things, suntan lotion, so that you don't get burned by the sun. We need to be ready, and we need to be finding ways that we can get ready for all of the opportunities and all of the things that are thrown at us that we are not ready. Were we ready a year ago? We couldn't have been too ready because we didn't know it was coming. Were we prepared? How prepared were we? Are we prepared today? We hear now vaccines, those who want to take the vaccines, those who don't want to take the vaccines, those who want to wait for herd immunity, which means enough of us will have had the vaccine, that will be, will be safe. There are places that are opening up. We are getting a little bit broader things that we can do now, but we need to be careful and we need to be prepared. Now, this scripture this morning that I've taken this one verse from, and I've only taken one verse from this scripture because we don't need to talk about being prepared for a wedding and trimming candles and burning lamps and having oil ready. That's not what the purpose of this is. The purpose of this is at the end of this chapter. Jesus says, Watch therefore. For you know neither the hour nor the day. This message goes across this scripture that's in the 21st, 25th chapter of Matthew, down through that 13th verse. The wise and foolish maidens. Who was ready for the bridegroom to come? Jesus started out this by saying, The kingdom of heaven shall be compared to ten maidens who took lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. We know nothing of that tradition. That's not a part of our tradition. We don't know what was going on with that. We have our own wedding traditions. We have someday 300, 400 years, people will look back and they'll say, well, what did they do that for? Well, we just say, well, that was a wedding tradition. This was a wedding tradition. The important words here are these. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be compared to. I believe Jesus could have taken any event and compared it to the kingdom of heaven. He could have said the Gallatin County Fair could be compared to the kingdom of heaven. 
I'm not going to try to think, say how he could fig, how he, what he would say about that. But everything has got to do with something that calls for an element of preservation and preparation. I want to say from something of a minor academic point of view that the New Testament, so much of the New Testament is involved in what we call second coming theology. Why? Because when Jesus left, he said, I will return. I will be back. Now, when someone leaves your house or leaves an event and they say, I'll be back, you think they're coming back within maybe a few hours, a day, a week. You think they're coming back within some time frame that is workable for you. When someone leaves your house, a child, a friend, you say, be sure now, come back. Be careful and come back. Jesus stood on that mountain with his disciples and he said, I'm leaving, I'll be back until I get back going to all the world, make disciples, take the word. I'll be back. Those people were just like us. They heard him say, I'll be back. And they thought, well, he's coming back soon. So all of these scriptures are couched in eschatological talk, which if we had our, when we will get to it eventually on the screen, and apocalyptic talk, the end of time, the second coming of Jesus. Like Jesus is coming back pretty soon. This one is no different. Because we, he was talking here about being prepared for this wedding, and we sense the immediacy. Now here we are 2,000 plus years later, and we haven't seen him come back just yet. We hope that perhaps one day that will happen. But in the intervening 2,000 years, men, women, boys, and girls have tried to figure out, how can I be ready for whatever the next event is? And that's the question that we answer. We ask. I don't know that we can answer it. That we ask today. They expected him back sooner rather than later. And that didn't happen. They didn't, they didn't know what had it didn't happen, but it, why it didn't, because he said he was going to be back. We come today a year out from this experience which changed our lives and will continue to change our lives. I've talked to a couple of people, ministers, friends, and, and colleagues in other churches. They still have, they have yet to open their service to anyone besides the people that are just doing the program up front because they can't figure out how to do it. Well, we figured out how to do it last May. You sit people by families, you tell them they've got to wear a mask, and you social distance these pews. We go everywhere else. We go to the store. Some go out to eat all the time. We go to work. We do all of these things. But yet there are those who can't figure out how we can have a worship service because of, they're afraid to touch the hymnals. I don't know. I've heard all kinds of things. I think there are times when we just have to say, okay, the effects of this are here to stay. They're here to stay. How do we react? How do we move forward? What are we going to do in the days ahead? Because I don't know that it's ever going to be back like it was before. I don't know that, it, that we'll ever see, it'll be a long time before we see packed football stadiums. Even if they say it's okay, there are going to be those that say, ah, you know, I'm not so sure that I want to, if there's variance around in all of this, I think that sometimes in each person's lifetime or perhaps in each century, there are those things that impact so much our lives. The coming of Jesus impacted the lives of those people. He came and he said, I'm going to show you a better way to live. I'm going to show you a better way to, to share the things of life. This is a still better way. That's a little half verse of scripture that I just love. I came to show you a still better way to show you a better way to live. He came and did that. This comes to us as it says to us, as it talks with us, as it moves us, this bad experience. How are we going to live and work differently going forward? 
What can we do to protect one another? The question is, are you ready? Are you ready for the second coming, if it were to happen today? Are you ready for something like this that happened a year ago? All of the things that we had to do. There were people who just said, well, I'll just go on a hold and I won't worry about it. There were those who said, I've got to adapt. I've got to do what I can, as we did, I hope, in our church and other churches did, in order to continue to maintain and to take the Word of God out to all people. As I've said, and maybe I say it too often, when we get back to full worship, that continues right there on that platform. What we're doing reaches out, and it provided us the impetus and the push to go on and do it, because if we didn't, then we would have nothing. We would have nothing. So we have an opportunity here to seize upon this opportunity. This is what people do. This is where advancements are made when you try new things. Even if you were forced to try them or you just wanted to try them, when you try new things, that's how we reach out to the future. That's what we're doing here. Are we ready in our minds to wrap our minds around this? We know that there have been political ramifications. We know that there have been th these, those who say, well, it doesn't matter if you wear a mask or you do wear a mask. Doctors and, and people who have found that with all of these things have been found and have been said. What are you going to wrap your mind around to do? Because it comes down to your decision. It comes down to your decision. Can you chase someone down on the street and say, where's your mask? Oh, you can't. Just better be sure that they're smaller than you are. They may not like that idea. How do we go about asking people? How do we go about suggesting it? How do we wrap our minds around this? Secondly, how do we keep ourselves in shape for the glory and the work of God? This church has not backed off one thing of what we do in the year except having attendance here and having the community choir here. We've done all the things that we're called upon to do in this community. We've shared with the poor. We've helped the sick. We've helped those who are in need. We continue to do that and will continue to do that. Are we keeping ourselves in shape to do that? The answer has to be yes. The way that we do that is through the work of the church, through our contributions, whether in the plate or on one of the other ways that we can share with what we are doing in the life and work of the church, because this has to happen to keep us in good shape, to keep us in good shape to be able to function and do what God wants us to do. What about your spirit? What do you do to keep your spirit? in good shape because sometimes it gets downright depressing it just gets depressing to drive by mcdonald's and know that i can't drive in and get a cheeseburger well i can drive through and get a cheeseburger but i can't go in and say i'd like to have a cheeseburger supersized meal please with light large diet coke can't do that because we can't do it at mcdonald's but in other restaurants in our town, you know, here, we can do it right down the street. You can go in. You can sit down. How do we prepare in spirit for the way things are going to be different? For us, it's life, and it's in the life of the church. Jesus, this whole passage is not about how many bridesmaids there were or how many groomsmen, how the preacher did or how the preacher didn't do how the organist or pianist did or how he or she didn't do on the music. It's about being ready. It's about being ready because this example means, in short, are you ready for what's happening here? Are you ready? This is a part of the custom. Are you ready? We need to be ready. I love this one or two little lines here that, that I've shared often with you, and I know you've heard it. Songs have been written about it, poems and so forth. It's, it's from the Shakers who were very in, into working 
into creating, hopefully they wanted to create a utopian society, they just left out one element that causes that the society doesn't go very far. But they wanted to create a utopian society where everyone worked and everyone did their part. There were no little who's sitting up in the room not doing their part. And the line is to work as if you would live a thousand years and to live as if you would die tomorrow. Work as if you would live a thousand years and live as if you would die tomorrow. What's the one word that we can apply to that? Well, two. Being ready. Being ready in mind, body, and spirit for whatever comes. I want to be ready, Laura sang. I want to be ready. I want to be ready just like John. Walk in Jerusalem just like John. I want to be ready. We ask ourselves that this day. We review where we've come. We speculate on where we're going. We ask God to go with us. May we bow in prayer. Our Father, thank you for bringing us together here. Thank you for helping us, having made the choice to do what was necessary to open these doors to even a limited number because it just feels good when we can either sit here or watch on our devices a service come to us from a place that we are familiar with, a place that maybe we've never been for some, a place that we may never be physically for others. But we have come to know the people who participate. For those who are unable to make it, have been members of this church all their lives, it's a warm feeling to know that the worship service goes on and that we can participate in this worship service from wherever we may be. Oh God, help us to be help us to be flexible and ready for whatever comes. Let us be able to respond, not to criticize. Let us be able to answer the questions as best we can without being a part of the problem. We have enough problems. We want to be what you want us to be and to hopefully be the answers. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Our hymn of invitation this morning, hymn number 344. That's three and two fours. I have decided to follow Jesus. Because when we do that, then we can listen to these scriptures and we can say, oh, that makes sense. I may not understand the example, but I understand what he's talking about. I have decided to follow Jesus, the first and second verses. May we stand. Lord's table, everyone is welcome. Everyone sitting here in the sanctuary and everyone at home also. We remember that Jesus is the ultimate gift. Jesus is the ultimate gift. That's the present is, not was. Jesus is. Because Jesus is in our life right now. We partake of this Lord's Supper. Each and every time we gather together and we remember Jesus when we gather together we bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear God, 
We all want to be ready. What a wonderful way. As we gather around this table today, we do remember Jesus. We remember Jesus every time we gather together and we feel your love each and every time we gather around this table, whether it's right here in this sanctuary or at home watching in the comfort of our homes. Jesus, Jesus' love is always in our hearts. In all our, in all our prayers, we pray that thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. And on that night in the upper room when Jesus was with his disciples, he took bread and he broke it and he prayed and he blessed it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, for this is my body which is broken for you. When you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake the bread of heaven together. like manner he took the cup, passed it among them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant, for as often as you eat of the bread and drink of the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us drink from the cup of forgiveness. Shall we pray? Everlasting Father, your words states that as often as we eat this bread and drink the cup, we proclaim your death until you come. We thank you for offering us this hope, even in your death. Thank you for this communion, which is a symbol of the realization of a spiritual union between you and us. Thank you for not only washing away our sins on the cross, but for welcoming us into a bond with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to mention, too, for those of you watching, if you would, are in Warsaw and would like to stop by Spike's office or here at the church when we're here, Sally can provide you with these for your communion service if you don't have something that you are using for home. Now, may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the sun fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand.